Bionic Luster Mark III is a dual digital filter with five morphable filter types, including low pass, band pass, high pass, notch, and all pass slash comb filter. The two inputs include two drive stages and voltage control for use as pre filter overdrive VCAs. Each channel has three CV inputs, two of which are assignable to any of the parameters. Bionic Luster includes four link options for merging and layering controls or processing between the two filters. Finally, like all Mark III series models, there is a built in preset manager capable of saving eight complete states and selecting or morphing between them. To start, let's take a look at the filter types. The audio I.O. on the Lester is very flexible. When we patch into A, we of course get sound at the A output. If we repatch to the B output, we can also hear the input copied from the A jack. This normal connection allows for parallel processing through two filters when nothing is patched into B. As we patch another oscillator into B, we can hear the connection is broken. The third mix output provides a summed signal of the two channels with a crossfader to blend between them. Note that this analog crossfade control state is not saved with presets. Let's turn up the input A gain control. When set just below 12 o'clock, the signal is at unity gain with no additional harmonics. As soon as the control passes center, the soft clipping stage begins, further indicated by the A or B filter label inverting in appearance on the display. As this control keeps rising, overdrive increases until hard clipping is reached towards the end of the control. Take visual note of the input gain settings as we listen to the filter sweeps. Let's start with low pass. The display shows the cutoff frequency in Hertz, that changes as the control is moved. It sweeps from 16 Hertz to 15,000 Hertz. Let's increase to 50% resonance. and more resonance, still with the input at unity gain. Let's increase to full resonance. At the highest setting, the filter will not self-oscillate, but exhibits a strong amplification of primary harmonics, all the way down to its lowest setting. Now we'll increase the gain into overdrive and return to 50% resonance. Your recycling wavetable envelope is patched to the hardwired cutoff input. The attenuverter is very helpful for dialing in desired modulation levels. Time to change modes. The mode control allows for smooth morphing between the five modes. The current position of your filter mode setting is shown on the display. Let's explore the sound of the bandpass setting. The procedure will be the same, sweeping the cutoff at lower and higher gain settings and varying amounts of resonance. 
Finally, an envelope is patched for a basic example of CV control. Take note of the control settings. This is the high pass setting, again with the same procedure as earlier. A common technique with high pass filters is to use increased resonance to boost a lower frequency in the spectrum. As you can hear, there's quite a bass boost with higher resonance settings. Now we are in the notch filter mode. Note that this mode actually has an increased effect with resonance all the way down, as the notch is at full width. Upon resonance increase, the notch will narrow to a small range of frequencies at the center of the cutoff point. Cutoff is modulated, the notch filter will sound similar to a phaser effect. Cycling envelopes or LFOs are recommended for modulation of the notch filter. The additional pre filter gain stage helps to bring less harmonically rich content up to the standards demanded by the bionic luster. All pass is the final mode, allowing all frequencies through but changing phase as the cutoff is swept. The moment resonance moves from the zero position, the filter becomes a positive feedback comb. A comb filter places evenly spaced peaks across the spectrum, with the width changed by the cutoff and the height or feedback increased with resonance. You may also think of it as a very fast delay line. The bionic luster includes a larger width than typically seen in comb filters, and can nearly reach into slapback delay territory.
As the resonance control moves towards 50%, the positive feedback begins to increase heavily. Upon crossing the halfway point, a negative feedback comb filter begins, and feedback returns to zero, making its way back to full feedback at the top of the resonance control. You may not expect it, but negative and positive feedback comb filters have a very different sound from one another. To finish up with filter types, let's manually morph through while modulating cutoff with the sine wave LFO. As you can see, the knobs on the Bionic Luster have been arranged for fast manual changes and are extremely playable for almost immediate tonal shifts.
Each channel has three CV inputs. As seen before, each cutoff knob has a hardwired CV input and a tenuverter. CV2 also includes an attenuverter. The two additional CV inputs are freely assignable to any of their associated channel's parameters. To assign CV control, hold the encoder and press the link button. Filter A assignment is shown on the first page, and as we scroll down, the filter B assignments appear. CV2 and 3 are assignable to input gain, mode, resonance, or cutoff. The inputs can both be assigned to the same parameter if desired, making it possible to have three cutoff CV inputs, among other arrangements. To start, let's assign all three inputs to cutoff. Here, a cycling envelope is patched to CV1, a mix of four pseudo-random gates to CV2, and a fast wavetable LFO to CV3. Let's assign CV2 to gain. Again, hold the encoder and press link. Now the input gain will be controlled by CV2, and we effectively have a VCA. The cycling envelope from the double Andre Mark II is controlling our pre-filter VCA. Note that the attenuverter level is important when choosing if your upper limit reaches into soft and hard clipping. Bringing it down ensures that the spike only reaches unity gain. The comb filter modes work particularly well with a pre-filter VCA, as we can control the impulses sent into the resonator. How about voltage-controlled resonance? First we'll patch mixed pseudo-random gates to cutoff and an envelope triggered from one of the gates to resonance. Finally, let's control the mode with the third CV input. As you can see, the Lester really starts to come alive with some basic, unrelated control voltage sources applied.
Now we could switch these connections physically, but you may have a large dense performance patch that is difficult to unplug or want to utilize the attenuverter on CV2 for the other signal. Regardless, we can assign these sources digitally. Of course these routings are saved with the presets as well, making CV control sources and modulation routing reassignable from a single control input when morphing presets. Here resonance and mode have had CV inputs swapped. This patch explores the possibilities with three envelopes patched into cutoff, resonance, and mode. The Stilson Hammer Mark 1 is producing a sequential gate burst with each push of its trigger button. In a patch like this, envelope shapes and times make a huge difference. Now the Stilson Hammer is freely looping and sending constant gate patterns to trigger the envelopes. The first of the four link modes is A control. Press the link button one time to enter this mode. A control copies the cutoff setting from filter A and adds it to filter B. Everything else remains independent. In use, the filter B cutoff knob acts like a distance control between the two filters peaks, while the cutoff A knob moves both of them. Here we are using the mix output to hear both filter peaks. We will explore this mode in stereo shortly. Wow, 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 wow,
Now let's explore series mode, by far one of the most powerful configurations in the Bionic Luster. In this mode, signal is patched into A and is internally connected from the A output back through filter B. This includes the overdriving input stage. Press the link button twice or until the display reads series. Make sure to patch signal to input A and from output B. This patch creates some basic percussion sounds by patching a gate signal into the fully resonant bandpass filter of the A section. The pings it produces do not really shine until filter B is set to a comb filter. There are tons of timbral possibilities when running the Lester in series. Let's take a listen to a few more. In this patch, a classic MS-20 style configuration of high pass into low pass is shaping the Hertz donut. One of the most exciting elements of series mode is the ability to place another overdrive stage after filter A. Listen to how the resonance is saturated as we bring input B up to hard clipping. Series mode is always the best choice for getting the most extreme timbres out of a bionic luster. Setting filter A to comb and shaping with the overdrive and filtering with B is a great configuration for creating realistic sounds with feedback and metallic noises. Reversing the previous configuration and sending low pass into a comb filter serves to accentuate tones as the comb resonator grabs onto harmonics hit by filter A's frequency setting.
series mode is truly endless, with many configurations that depend very much on the filter arrangement, overdrive and filter settings, and the kinds of modulation present. Press the link button three times or until the display reads 4-pole. Like series, patch signal to input A and from output B. This mode is the same as series, except all of the settings from filter A are copied to filter B, including gain. Essentially a more extreme version of the standard 2-pole mode is heard with twice as much of everything. It is possible to achieve self-oscillation with the bionic luster in 4-pole mode. If the output is patched from A, we will hear the standard 2-pole mode. Take a listen to the different filter types when in 4-pole mode. The notch filter is particularly strong in this mode, having a greater phaser-like effect. Filters take a new form here too, with a more organic and extreme quality. Sending stepped voltages to control the comb filter spacing can be very interesting. Less frequent changes allow the resonance to ring and develop before switching to a new frequency. The final available link mode is stereo. Press link four times or until the display reads stereo. This mode includes two separate input and output pairs, but copies all of the controls of filter A over to filter B. Like A control, the filter B knob serves as an offset with the control from A added to its position. A detuned pair of oscillators is patched left and right from the piston Honda Mark III. Wow. <laughs>
Let's offset the right side's frequency slightly from the left. The filter spacing is more noticeable with modulation from a cycling envelope patched. Vast range of timbre morphing available on the Bionic Luster could only be realized with modern digital synthesis methods. Combined with the wide range of sounds possible from the Hertz Donut and Piston Honda, many new and exciting timbres can easily be created. Finally, let's return to the A control link mode. This mode can be used to bring mono signals into the stereo dimension. Remember, A control copies only the cutoff position of A and adds it to the position of channel B's cutoff. The rest of the controls remain independent. Wow, 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 wow,
The next section will include some full patches utilizing many of the techniques demonstrated throughout the previous sections.
watching this long exploration of the Bionic Luster Mark III, the latest release from Industrial Music Electronics. Keep an eye out for future videos and new product releases from the Mark III series. You can visit industrialmusicelectronics.com for more information. This final patch utilizing the Morphin Preset Manager on the Piston Honda, Hertz Donut, and Bionic Luster will show us up. Thank <laughs> you. 